So at the, at the recent um, DCW event, um, you were promoting, focusing on real-time data visualization and smart insights, and obviously in particular, how they can help with um, optimizing both power and cooling. So perhaps you can just give, give us a bit of flesh on, on the bones of that idea. Yeah. Uh, shall I take that one, Simon? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, okay, so we will showcase our D DCIM, if you like, our data center infrastructure management system or tool. And, uh, you know, it's it, the tool is, I suppose, um, produced and derived from working with data center customers, what the uh, top 10, should we say, issues are on the site. So, you know, that can go from the general performance. Uh, management of, of, of the asset on site, billing and the accuracy of billing, uh, clients knowing you know what their possible worst failover scenarios are, managing energy costs is right up there on the top 10. Um, and then knowing their IT resource and the capacity of that resource. So do they get an actual clear picture or a single view of all of that? And you know we see you know going forward greenfield construction uh, clients with you know, multiple vendor equipment uh, scenarios, multiple carrying their own software and the control systems. Even if you look back the way, you'll see aged asset, aged sites with, you know, what I would call dis disparate systems and incongruent, you know, networks, sensors, technologies, different eras, <clears throat> and clients not knowing exactly what they have. So we're looking back the way to try and help clients uh, overcome that but also forward in terms of new build and greenfield construction to try and minimize that impact going, going down the line. Um, you know, so it's, it's identifying uh, the asset, what have we got on, on site, locate it, tag it, uh, and, and then use from all of that, what I would call you know, um, invisible data that's been invisible and use that data, convert it to, I suppose, actionable intelligence um, and, and that's a, a, a general view, Phil, of, of what we're trying to do with uh, with, with the uh, Iconix DC arm system. And, it, and it, do you have a handle in, in terms of how many, obviously you deal with a lot of data center owners, operators, do you have any kind of idea of how many of them are already sort of somewhere along this journey of understanding what they've got and optimizing it and how many are still um, I won't say living in the dark ages, but have progress to be, <laughs> progress yeah. to be made, shall we say. Yeah, I mean, you know, I haven't worked in data centre for quite a while now. As a contractor, as a, an OEM vendor, as, as a manufacturer vendor, you know, you see all sorts up there. You see, uh, you know, um, <laughs> you know, you have the client direct, or you have a construction piece, and then that's handed over to the operator or a facilities management company. And the intelligence, I suppose, in terms of the human intelligence, gets lost along the way a little bit. Um, and, and I'd say it's most do have a handle on where they want to be. I think what most suffer from is possibly the what I referred to before, the different systems, different networks, not really talking to each other um, and sometimes acting against each other, you know. Um, but some do have a, a good handle on it. And we have worked with one or two, some of the larger colors in, you know, deploying uh, so the the iconic system, uh, and they can see, and are still developing. I want to what they call develop the data science behind uh, DSIM, and you know we're looking at artificial intelligence and actually you know controlling the buildings, and heading towards automation more than I suppose the human uh, the human touch, shall we say? Yeah. So some do, most do. But some are still suffering from, I suppose, lack of investment uh, uh, in, in, in the control of the data centers, uh, but a lack of really open, what I would call open protocol systems that can actually you know, look, connect to anything, anywhere, and is completely open and, and, and have a single view. You, you know, so clients have multiple dashboards of this, that, and the other, and you know, it, it can't see the wood for the trees, if you, if you, if you, <laughs> if you understand what I mean. In terms of, so you've got this partner, the partnership with the Automated Systems Division, and you, you mentioned the Iconic Software. So, so just a bit of background, how that came about, and, and I guess most importantly, the, the benefits that's offering to, to your customers. 
Yeah, you're okay with me to carry on, Simon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So automation systems division. So it's it's. Um, I mean, I suppose the Mitsubishi IT cooling and, and that part of our business has been well known in the data center market and has been for a while. Some of that through acquisition, Klim Venata, RC Group, etc. The automation systems, division, we're actually the electrical division, if you like, uh, of Mitsubishi Electric. Now we have all the range of products that you would expect to see UPS, MV, LV, uh, and, and the DCIM system, but hadn't really been pushing hard or directly into, into the data center. So what we've done is in terms of partnership, internally, you know, the companies looked and the groups looked internally to say, oh, hang on, we've got these, this division doing this, this doing that, why not do this, join together and become one data center group. The Iconics DCM, that was an acquisition uh, three, four, five years ago. And that was an independent company working independently with open systems uh, for the data center market. So we acquired that company. We're also working with uh, or partnered up with another uh, integrator, if you like, in the Netherlands, who's got a lot of experience and we've joined forces with them in terms of what they can bring to DSIM, so quick deployment and rapid deployment tools and all, all the uh, uh, the standard building blocks, if you like, to, to you know for a data center to become more efficient and more sustainable. Okay, and I'm sort of carrying on with the the intelligence theme. Um, I'm I right thinking that as as with many folks in the, in the sector, you, you are adding sort of significant intelligence capability, if you like, to the like the your IT cooling portfolio. Is that right? Indeed. I mean, I mean, you know, on the IT cooling itself, and Simon will know better than I, you know, we're continually developing more efficient products. Those products and systems have their own control systems um, and, and, and we'll continue to have that um, and that will develop. Um, so what we're doing jointly, if you like, and it may be DSIM or Iconics is an umbrella system, if you like, to, to pick all, all of that up. So we can talk, you know, we can talk to our own systems, obviously, but we can talk to everyone else. I don't know if you want to add to that, Simon. Yeah, no, obviously from the IT cooling part, obviously from, 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 our, from our sister company, MeHits, um, obviously they are our uh, Mitsubishi Electronic, Hydronics and IT cooling business. Obviously that was part of an acquisition as, as, um, as, as Mike said a minute ago, obviously part of the Clima Veneta and RC brand. So for the cooling side, we are working on high level software in that as well. We've developed a, a a system where the chillers will talk to the indoor units and they could communicate at all times. So as data center load drops, we can start raising the chill water temperature, which obviously offers free cooling. And obviously with that intelligence working together, we optimize obviously the free cooling capabilities, whether it be at full load or part load, obviously within the data suite itself. So this is the ongoing development constantly. And that's obviously uh, artificial intelligence that learns over time. And in that, like Mike says, that will be, that's on an open protocol that then can obviously go back to, to the main systems that obviously Mike's been talking about. And in terms of benefits, I guess cost is one significant. It's not cheap to run data centers, so I guess savings there are important. And sustainability has always been out there, but it's becoming increasingly important. So I guess it's helping. You say free cooling, obviously that has... Um, benefits in terms of reducing carbon footprint stuff are those the main two sort of benefits of, of the intelligence approach um yeah i mean if you talk about sustainability obviously from from my point of view obviously now obviously the world of decarbonization uh, etc obviously now been spoken about a lot so we're now starting to look at data centers not so necessarily with, with the possibility of free cooling as such but with heat pump solutions so we're basically we recover the heat from the data center upgrade it and then use that potentially as a commodity to sell and obviously utilize that to heat local towns local villages obviously that are in lo local areas of the data suite so therefore obviously the uh, data centers provider has the electricity and rather than wasting that to the environment obviously from heat from the it equipment we can capture that heat and put it back into the water and then obviously sell that as potentially a commodity to the local bit to the local area in uh, district heat networks, obviously going to the fifth generation heat network systems that we're currently looking about, where rather than wasting energy, we try to transfer it, obviously, rather than wasting it to the environment. Yeah, just on that point, interesting, because I know sort of mainland Europe, they're, they're perhaps a little bit ahead of us when it comes to the, yeah. certainly the district heating. And 
one of the biggest obstacles seems to be location. You know, so if yeah. if you haven't got a suitable user of that um, power very close to you, it's not viable. Uh, is that changing, or is the industry beginning to understand that it's a good idea to? Uh, I'm not saying build data centers right next to you know a, a factory or a school or whatever it is, but at least be more aware that if they're going to try and do that. They need to I, mean, I think them. when you I think when you look at fifth generation, the idea now is all services are local to yourselves. So the idea is that you will have micro potentially in the future micro data centers in your town, obviously. To do, and then obviously you can utilize that heat obviously on the, on, on the local housing estate. If you're in an industrial area, obviously that heat could be captured and, and then sold to the factory next door that needs heat for processing some kind of equipment or um, product. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely becoming more and more of a concept. The Scandinavians are definitely a, ahead of the game when it comes to, to obviously, to, to the UK. Um, we've done, we've already done uh, the Clean of Editor about five, six years ago, already did a data centre in, in Finland that does that. Um, catches heat and then sells it to the local village, basically. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely something that's coming. And I think as, as we now, now, obviously, you know, current climate, we know electricity is doubled. You know, potentially going to treble over time. Gas is now becoming, um, we need to wean ourselves off of gas for heating. So the idea of having this heat available and reusing it, repurposing it for another process is becoming more and more of a concept that people are buying into lately, definitely. And I'm assuming on, on the flip side, on the, on the power side, both intelligence is creeping into how you operate the, you know, the power equipment, but also I'm aware, I mean, for example, demand management and stuff, is that also an area back to sustainability where you're seeing more of an uptake? So people want to, as you, know, you say, for obvious reasons, with the price of power, they just want to make sure that the power they're using within the data centre, but they can also maybe help out, let's say, with demand management, selling power back to the grid and stuff when, when relevant. Is, is that beginning to happen? It, yeah, I mean, you can see different in, in different guises. Um, uh, you know, we're talking heading towards microgrids, I suppose. Uh, and, you know, what's coming down the line is, you know, you have already, in terms of sustainable, you have solar, wind, battery energy storage, hydrogen fuel cell, uh, and, and all of this, green hydrogen, etc. cetera. Um, but, you know, those are, at the moment, you probably have a bit of this here and a bit of the other there. Whereas I think where we're heading to, maybe two to three, maybe even five years, is hybrid systems. You know, so then I mean, you have DC coming to the fore as well in, in, in data centers. So I think um, uh, the hybrid systems where you have all of that, uh, um, you know, on, on, on a site, for example, and it's its own micro microgrid. But also, you know, we're looking at, ahead towards, you know, DC ready, or grid ready um, UPS systems, you know, smart UPS that, that then help um, the, the, let's say the utility in terms of uh, less power being taken into the data center, more being produced. Uh, and in fact, then going the other way, back up the line to the grid, you know, supporting the local grid. Um, I've even heard of KMC cases and not been involved in any of that where, you know, you have the grid where there's overcapacity dumping into the data center, you know, into the battery energy storage system. So, so all of that's coming down the line, you know, and, and we have, as I say, hydrogen, et cetera. But there's lots of other things going on, you know, in, in the background, Phil, there's battery technologies, for example, you know, the sodium ion is, ion has been looked at and zinc magnesium, and, you know, lithium ion is out there right now, but, you know, those the battery manufacturers are working hard on all of that sort of stuff. I mean, Mitsubishi ourselves, you know, we're looking at things like, for example, and, you know, we're looking ahead to the merging of technologies. If you, for example, you know, the fiber optic transducers, you know, the, the intelligence, the data comes into the data center. Mitsubishi manufacture the transducers and they've just recently launched a product where the, the heat reduction of that product is, is of the order of at 80, 90%, you know, from, from previous generation. You know, we manufacture our own, obviously they're cooling products, but on the electrical side, we manufacture all of our own uh, products, UPS, MVLV, even the power electronics, you know, um, manufacture that ourselves. And in fact, for some competitors as well, you know, so and continually looking at reducing, um, you know, the power electronics, becoming more efficient, giving us less heat, reducing footprint as well, which helps towards smaller systems, basically. You know, so, yeah, so there's lots of stuff going on. And I'm guessing, I mean, a lot of this is driven by the, the, the sort of environmental 
angle, but with what's going on in the world right now, supply chains and stuff like that, is that also giving it a sort of added impetus? You, you, know, you mentioned sort of microgrids and more sort of local activity, if you like, whether that's power generation, etc. It just seems, and also the supply chain, as you know, the idea of getting bits of kit for data centers from the other side of the world is maybe not going to be as as easy to you know achieve as as it you know we've assumed it into is that is that right can you just see everything sort of shrinking if that makes sense to a slightly more local level at least Simon do you want to take that or am I um, yeah I mean I think there's always, always going to be a, a world supply I mean it's obviously Mitsubishi Electric are a worldwide company and obviously we we, we are um, trying to control our supply chain in this current situation Obviously, you know, we are we manufacture in Europe, we manufacture in the Middle East, we manufacture in America. So we have manufacturing hubs all over all over the world. So, you know, the supply chain issue at the moment is obviously more down to raw materials, obviously getting hold of actual bits to make equipment. Um, but we are mitigating that risk by manufacturing most of the equipment in-house within Mitsubishi, obviously. Okay. And in terms of any other, I mean, we've covered a bit, a bit of ground here. So are there any other, I don't think we, you've sort of referenced, I, I think, Edge along the way. I mean, is Edge computing an area that is going to have an impact on new folks or is it kind of just doing something, that, sorry, the same as you've always been doing, but on a, on a much reduced scale? Or does it um, sort of create different demands for the technologies that you can supply? Is that an area for, you know, of interest? Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely an area of interest for us. I mean, I'm not quite uh, personally seeing quite the uptake on the edge as, as people are going to, are obviously talking about. I still haven't got a little data centre down the end of my road, which my Google car talks to, which people talked about obviously many moons ago. But no, we, we are setting up for that. We are, we, you know, from our point of view, we've got a micro data centre containment solution that we're working on with the factory, which is a joint venture with the MeHits factory, obviously, for the cooling and also the power side, we've got an in integrated UPS solution. We're, we're working on those solutions at the moment where we can deliver the containment, the, 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 the power and the cooling as, as one Mitsubishi branded solution. So yeah, we're working, definitely working on smaller micro data center type solutions, yes. In terms of the future, I mean, Mitsubishi, it's a, it's a name, if, if I'm allowed to say, I mean, it's a name is, I'm very familiar with from various industries I worked with. So you do, you do a lot of, across the globe in a lot of industries. In terms of the data center industry, is is it fair to say that you're looking to raise your profile or are you comfortable with what you achieve? I mean, just any thoughts as to you know, where you want Mitsubishi to be within I, the data center space? I, I, think, I, think, I think we both got a similar answer to this one. I'll say my side and then I'll let Mike say his <laughs> side. Um, yeah, obviously Mitsubishi obviously were our, our, our power company electric obviously hence the name electric electric obviously part of the part of the, the, uh, the brand name um we've obviously procured and and take obviously um bought obviously clima veneta at rc so we now have a, a, a real cooling brand in the, in the in the applied world which is where the data center seem to sit obviously we're we're a leader in um wall mounted air conditioning and vrf etc but obviously due to the procurement which happened now I guess it must be six or seven years ago, we've now got pro more product available on the cooling side. And then obviously now the business, like Mike said earlier in the interview, is starting to be more joined up with the power because you know, our, uh, an Amer part of our American business does multi-million pounds worth of UPSs into the American data center market. So the idea now from our point of view is merging that technologies that we have within the group as one solution for the client, which is why the likes of Mike's been employed, obviously, on, on that kind of level, obviously, to start to coordinate that activity. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll just add to that, Phil. Yeah, it's um, raising the profile is definitely where, where we, we are in terms of a complete data centre solution. Um, you know, Simon said, we have all the products, we're developing the products. But I think as well, you know, I, I recently joined five, four or five months ago, we're employing people as well now from the data center operators themselves. So, you know, we are tapping into the actual operator. What would they want to see? And, and when I say tapping in, we're, you know, we're employing people who have actually deployed, say, the iconic DCIM in uh, in the data center space as they were the client, if you like. So we're taking that knowledge and helping us develop 
uh, uh, the Mitsubishi brand and, and the name. Um, yeah, and going forward, you know, we, 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 we've merged, say, you know, we're not merged, that's the wrong word, we've joined up together our cooling side, our hydronics side, the electrical, the UPS, all of that. But we're continually looking, even, you know, with we have the generation, the, the diesel engine, gas engine side, they're different business, but, you know, we're, we're collaborating with, with those guys as well. But I mentioned technology before, going forward, you know, we spend billions in terms of R&D, uh, and now some of that's getting diverted, if you like, and, and focused on, on the data center segment. So we have, you know, Mitsubishi is in, in space, it builds spacecraft, it builds, you know, uh, sat nav systems for most vehicles on the planet. <clears throat> you know, it's very much at the forefront of R&D and technology. So we're going to, you know, in, in terms of just developing ourselves and putting ourselves out there, we also have this huge R&D uh, engine behind us, you know, so yeah, so that, that that's that's uh, where we're headed, Phil. That's brilliant. Well, I'm really grateful for both of you spending the time to talk to me. So thanks very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Phil. Thank you. Alrighty. Cheers. Thanks.